بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله الذي رزقنا أن نحاجر في سبيل الله وننضم في هذه الدولة الإسلامية دولة إسلامية في العراق والشام ونحمد الله الذي رزقنا وجمعنا مع هؤلاء الأسود دولة الإسلام في كل مكان والحمد لله الذي رزقنا أن نبيع أمير المؤمنين أبي بكر القريشي البغدادي حفظه الله يا أميرنا لقد بيعنا على السمع والطاعة وبيعنا على الموت فامضي بنا حيث ما أمرك الله ونقول للطواغيت والكفار في كل مكان نحن نقول لكم كما قال إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام لأبي إنا براء منكم ومما تعبدون من دون الله كفانا بكم وبدا بيننا وبينكم العداوة والبغداء أبدا حتى تؤمنوا بالله وحده ونقول لكم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما جئناكم بغضب فأبشروا فأبشروا يا أهل الكفار والله العظيم والله العظيم فنطهر الجزيرة منكم يا أيها الأنجاز ونفتح البيت المصنص منكم يا أيها اليهود ونفتح روما كالنهد كالبني إسحاق فنفتح روما والعندلس بإذن الله تعالى So dig this. A man was bulldozing a bog in central Ireland the other day when he noticed something unusual in the freshly turned soil. Turns out he'd unearthed an early medieval treasure, an ancient book of Psalms that experts date to the years 800 to 1000. Experts say it will take years of painstaking work to document and preserve this book, but eventually it will go on public display. Now here's the kicker. The book, about 20 pages of Latin script, was allegedly found open to Psalm 83. Now, if you're a scholar, as you know, Psalm 83, God hears complaints that other nations are plotting to wipe out the name of Israel. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, said the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within it. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Humiliation, then execution. That's the fate the enemies of Islamic State know they face if they're defeated or captured. It's powerful, dark propaganda that these images reinforce once again. Herded like sheep and stripped to their underwear, these are apparently Syrian soldiers who'd held out against the jihadists in the last army stronghold of Raqqa province, the epicenter of Islamic State. The Syrian government has conceded the defeat, but suggested it was orderly, an evacuation. These images tell a different story. And it's one that Islamic State meticulously documented once again. When the jihadists captured earlier Syrian army bases, the severed heads of soldiers were displayed in public. Another video appears to show the fate of these soldiers, around 100 lying face down in a row of jumbled, lifeless bodies. The prolific IS propaganda machine has since produced another message, this time for the Kurdish forces fighting them in northern Iraq. Entitled A Message in Blood, it parades a group of men in orange jumpsuits. Speaking Kurdish, they're described as captured Peshmerga fighters. One is selected for a macabre set piece, similar to what was done to the US journalist James Foley. With the backdrop of the main mosque in Mosul, the man is beheaded. The jihadists threatened that others will be killed if Kurdish leaders continue to side with the U.S. 
but there are other battlegrounds in Syria where Islamic State may be involved. Fighting has intensified between government forces and rebels in the Golan by the Israeli border. A UN force has patrolled the area for decades. 43 have now been taken hostage. The UN has not said which group has hold of them, but it could be the Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front, once the biggest jihadist threat in Syria, now superseded by an even graver menace, Islamic State. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites, of Moab, and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Aser also has joined with them. They open the children of Lot. Selah. Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, is now in the hands of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. ISIS, as it's known, now controls a vast stretch of territory from western Syria to central Iraq. The shockwaves of the ISIS blitzkrieg have reached Israel, ironically today one of the quietest corners of the Middle East. Quiet, for now. So they had good intelligence, they know everything, that to where, where to go in order to, to seize the power, the, the power centers, either the Jabhat al-Nusra or by the Daesh. Former chief Israeli army intelligence analyst Jacques Neria sees the upheaval in Iraq as an opportunity to prepare for perilous times ahead. The fact that the Arabs are dealing with Arabs and uh, everybody is busy killing the, the one another in the Arab world, uh, it gives uh, Israel a time out to reorganize and to prepare itself for the long, on the long run. This video, purporting to be from Tikrit, shows hundreds of government soldiers now prisoners of ISIS, though CNN can't independently verify the video. Baghdad's U.S. armed and trained army is now in disarray. ISIS and its allies are now flush with U.S. supplied weapons and ammunition, abandoned by Iraqi troops. And if the Iraqi army fails to crush its enemies, a radical, aggressive Islamist state close to Israel's borders could become a reality. If Iraq falls in the hands of ISIS, then we will have a terrorist state, where terrorists would be trained, would be equipped, would be financed by a state and not by an organization which is hiding. For the time being, ISIS is busy fighting in Iraq and Syria, but at the center of its jihadi ideology is the ultimate destruction of the state of Israel and the liberation of Jerusalem. The fighting in Syria has already reached the edge of the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, where Israel has bolstered its forces, ready for the worst. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Jerusalem. A new camp for the Syrian refugees is planning to be erected in the Golan Heights, days after the ISIL armed groups became very close to the Syrian villages in the southern part of the area. ISIL terrorists have succeeded to kill some civilians and to publish threatening messages on their social media accounts against the Syrians in this area. These days, the terrorists of ISIL are threatening our brothers to death. These pictures show the location of the first refugee camp in the Golan Heights. This as fighting is still going on between the Syrian forces and the armed militias. There are reports that even the Israeli army is preparing itself for a military operation inside Syrian borders. This camp that is located within the borders is meant for civilians. Sometimes we see people walk very close to the border as the Israelis watch them closely. Sometimes they point their guns at them. The first group of refugees arrived a few days ago. The camp, which currently can shelter 300 people, has been designed to expand to accommodate thousands if necessary.
Well, we're not very far from the demarcation line, but what you can see behind me is an Israeli police car. This area has been declared a closed military zone. No traffic is being let through this area that approaches uh, the demarcation line. Uh, in this area, there have been errant shells, according to the Israeli army, uh, landing at least three, probably more shells coming in from the Syrian side. Uh, this morning, one Israeli officer was wounded, and this afternoon, a civilian was wounded by some of those shells. This is fighting going on inside Syrian territory between the Syrian army and rebels. Among those rebels are members of the Nusra Front. That is an Al-Qaeda affiliated group that's operating in Syria. According to uh, the Israeli military as well as activist sources within Syria, it was the Nusra Front which was able to take over the Syrian Syrian post at the Kenitra uh, crossing from the Syrian army. So this is really the first time uh, where we've seen on the one, uh, just really separated by about 200 meters, Israeli forces on that demarcation line, 200 meters up the road, the members of the Al Nusra front. Uh, so this area over the last few years has seen occasional spillover uh, from the fighting in Syria, but this does seem to be uh, the most serious mm -hmm. flare-up uh, we've seen since the outbreak of the Syrian uprising in March of 2011. Aisha? So Ben, put this in further context for us, the significance of this crossing now under control of, of these rebels and what implications it may have for the broader fight against al-Assad's forces. Well, certainly it represents something of a loss of a, sort of a symbolically critical uh, position by the Syrian army uh, to its opponents. And of course, in this case, it's uh, some opponents who are affiliated uh, with al-Qaeda. Now, this is a crossing that isn't an ordinary border crossing in any sense of the word. Uh, the UN, the Red Cross, uh, some humanitarian workers are allowed to go back and forth. Some. Syrian uh, residents of the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights are able to pass back and forth, but by and large, there isn't a lot of traffic on that crossing, but it's an area that is, even in the calmest times, uh, fairly tense, and it's been very tense, uh, certainly in the last year or two, as the fighting rages on in Syria. Eric, well, dozens of U.N. peacekeepers rescued in the Golan Heights, this after Syrian rebels with al-Qaeda links surrounded the peacekeepers' camp for days. Syrian human rights officials are stressing the incident highlights the risks of being drawn further into the growing conflict. John Huddy live in our Mideast Bureau with more. John? Yeah, Arthel, nearly actually three dozen UN peacekeepers managed to escape Syria, crossing back into Israel today. But uh, tonight, UN forces there remain under fire, UN troops. Now, earlier this morning, the Al Qaeda linked Nusra Front attacked 40 Filipino UN troops that are manning a UN camp in the Golan Heights. And uh, the UN says that there have been no reports of casualties. But again, the fighting continues there tonight. Now, Israeli troops at this point remain posted along the Syrian border and have taken up positions at the main crossing in the Golan Heights because of the situation. This, all of this happening as the whereabouts of 44 other UN peacekeepers taken by Islamic militants earlier this week remains unknown, although a UN official said there are, they are, quote, safe and in good health. Now that said, as you mentioned, Arthel, there is growing concern that UN peacekeepers in Syria will be drawn further into the conflict as various rebel groups continue to battle the Syrian military. Arthel? All right, John Huddy. Thanks a lot, John. Dozens of Filipino UN troops are free after being surrounded by Syrian rebels near the Golan Heights. The UN says nearly three dozen UN peacekeepers from the Philippines were rescued during a gun battle. Another group of peacemakers, also from the Philippines, remains trapped at another outpost and they're under fire. Separately, another 44 peacekeepers, these from Fiji, were captured by Syrian rebels last week. They're still missing. A UN official says he received assurances that the Fijian peacekeepers are safe and in good health. An al-Qaeda-linked group is believed to be responsible for these attacks. Stephanie Freed joins us live from Tel Aviv now to give us more insight on the situation in the Golan Heights. Stephanie. 
Well, Susan, um, as you're saying, the things are tense. There's ongoing fighting. The images, of course, that we're seeing here on uh, the national television here are of those gun battles, of smoke, of fighting that are ongoing. And these uh, UN forces are caught right in the middle, those who are still being held. Uh, they're caught in the middle. They're sitting ducks. They're unarmed. They're sitting on a ceasefire line. They've been there since uh, not these particular people, but UN, uh, let's say, mediators or people on the ceasefire line have been there since 1974, and it's on the border between Syria and Israel, uh, and they're there to keep that ceasefire in place. Uh, and essentially, uh, they are there and they could be used as a ploy, as a way by the rebel forces um, to goad the Syrian government. So that's who the fighting is between. Syria, certainly, this has Israel's government and Israel's military's attention. Um, that area is about three hours from where I am now, three hours driving. Um, so. Israel's military right now reportedly on high alert, especially now this evening after several mortars in this ongoing fighting between the sides, and the reason these men were captured uh, is, is ongoing, and mortars landed very close to that ceasefire line, to the, to the Israeli side of the ceasefire line. Um, Israel's watching it very closely. The concern is that Syria's military could overfly into an area that Israel has deemed or that has been deemed internationally they're not supposed to. Uh, again, it's being watched closely. This isn't the first time that UN people have been taken. I was there in March 2013 when others who were released fled the area, abandoned their posts because for them it's just not worth it to stay in place and really be sitting ducks. Susan. Stephanie, the ceasefire itself, how are the two sides assessing it? I guess we're in the fourth day now. Well, it's, it's, it's as if going from one front to the other, now Israel's military is on high alert in the Golan Heights, moving back to Gaza. As yesterday, the talk was on assessing gains, all both sides, Israel, Gaza, the Hamas claiming victory militarily. Uh, today, the talk is about repair and about money and about assessing the damage. Uh, on the Israeli side, it looks like billions of dollars are going to be earmarked to compensate residents of southern Israel for the evacuation of their homes, for damage to their homes, their properties from rockets that came in from Gaza. On the Gaza side, uh, one, one refugee agency has said, estimated, that it will take 20 years to rebuild the damage done in Gaza at the current rate of flow of goods that get into Gaza. 5,000 homes have been destroyed in this operation, a total of 17,000 in combined operations throughout the years. 17,000 homes have been destroyed, massive undertaking to reestablish an infrastructure in Gaza. So right now, looking at the damages, uh, Israel's Prime Minister this evening in a televised interview talked about the fact, however, that he will make peace with the Palestinians, with the Palestinian Authority, but the Palestinian Authority has to decide. They're either going to get rid of Hamas and their partnership with Hamas or choose peace with Israel. So essentially, although there is a ceasefire, there's a truce in place, it is a grudging truce, I would say, on both sides. Susan. Stephanie Freed reporting live from Tel Aviv. Thank you for that. In Syria, the ISIS fighting continues. The ISIS fighting continues. That is Syrian rebels are now facing Bashar al-Assad's forces in the Golan Heights, and that is just a few miles from the Israeli border. It happens to be the same area where those al-Qaeda-linked group abducted 45 UN peacekeepers last week. You know, the UN has been monitoring that border since 1974. John Huddy is live in Jerusalem with the very latest on this. John, those UN peacekeepers, they're still missing? Yeah, they are. Um, Eric, over the weekend, about 70, more than 70, 
UN personnel were able to get out of Syria. They escaped Syria, but as you mentioned, those 45 UN peacekeepers remain in Islamic militant hands. Now, all of this has been happening, you touched on this, Eric, in the region of the Golan Heights on the Syrian side of the Syria-Israel border. There's been intense fighting between the al-Nusra Front, okay, which are Islamic militants, and Syria's uh, government forces there. And over the weekend, UN peacekeepers at several bases okay, in that area of the Golan Heights were trapped by those Islamic militants, but after fighting, managed by UN troops, managed to get out of there. However, those 45, 44, 45, UN members remain in militant hands at this point, Eric. And we all, John, the fighting continuing in Syria, not just uh, ISIS, uh, but in East Damascus, there's been some more battles there. Tell us about that. Right. Yeah, it's been intense there. That's been a, a main battle point at this point between Syrian forces and Islamic and rebel forces, Islamic militants. I mean, you can see there was intense bombing uh, that's been going on over the weekend and also today Syrian forces continuing both the air and ground assault on rebel strongholds in East Damascus. So not only do you have the Golan Heights, the fighting there, but also East Damascus. And there's been reports of casualties on both sides, though we don't have the numbers at this point. Meanwhile, again, on the Israel-Syria border, um, over the weekend, on Sunday, yesterday, uh, Israel shot down a Syrian drone that the government says accidentally flew over the border into Israel. Still, Israeli forces remain posted on the border, though no shots have been fired today but they remain on high alert at this point, Eric. Yeah, I see. and Syria, John, as you know, continues to be a humanitarian crisis. 200,000 people killed, right. millions displaced, and it sees no sign of ending. Thank you so much. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honored, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified. Or let them hear, and say, it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God for me, neither shall there be after me. I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. 